Good morning, channel friends. Is it day or night? We are in the basement right now, and it is morning. But it seems dark, so do not be frightened by this extreme theatricality. It is not intentional, but that's how it is. A beautiful basement. I'm at Mirella's house, a client of mine. I have already come here because you saw last year's end of year video set here because I delivered this beautiful table to her. Now she's called us back, called us back because there are two of us today. Hello everyone, welcome back. Since this is a very beautiful house, it has particular walls. Some of them have been renovated and there is concrete, while others do not because there are bricks. Mirella thought to call us and say, I want something special, not ordinary. So she didn't settle for a classic decorator. She asked for us. And we'll do a great makeover today on these walls. We'll teach you how to make different steps to create different textures without using expensive products, right? This is what I understood. You'll make me work to understand it better later. And we'll do something really, really special and picturesque. Note that we will be using techniques that we have also taught extensively in other tutorials filmed with Alessandra Elia. So, watch out if you feel like learning her art besides taking a course with her, which is obvious. Also go and watch last year's tutorials, which are very important. And now we start. Yes, let's not spoil much. <laughs> I start by stirring my vintage wall color really well. We have decided to spread a neutral base color, dark but neutral, and we will apply it both here and on other walls because Morella chose this base shade. Then Alessandra will explain how to execute her different techniques, but I don't think she has quite such clear ideas either, do you? Not this time. We know what the customer would like, but there are several ways to achieve a goal. So today let's see which is the best, but first let's lay the base. We obviously use the Merlino brush, which is really great on these surfaces. It covers very well, and it is always nice to use it. I have stirred well now. I load the reservoir of this very stubby brush then. Using my usual rough brush stroke, I spread the color over the entire surface. Obviously, one coat is enough here, and of course, it's going to absorb a little more because this is a very rough concrete wall, so we know that the wall clings well. We've just dusted the wall, but with all this pitting, these little holes, we're going to have to insist a little bit to get the color everywhere. You have to slightly insist, doing circular movements to go well into the holes. But above all, it is important to understand that you only apply one coat. So it is true that you will use a little more, but you only apply one coat to go deep enough. So I suggest to you the Merlino brush, which is soft and it goes well in the little holes and cover the whole surface. Since we have to paint everything anyway, I might as well spread the color on this side too. Look how beautiful it is here too, that you see the reflection on two different spots. There. Don't be surprised if you sometimes see in your home that magic wall takes on different tones, even on adjacent walls. This is simply the most important factor. Magic wall is semi-satinized. It incorporates light and throws it back into the environment, amplified. So whether you have warm lights, cold lights, warm or cold floors, it is crucial to understand that light can affect the tone. Carry on.
without in any way undermining your project, which will be exceptional, but the base is already beautiful. I mean, you can see that this color is exceptional. It's not a normal brown, it's a modern brown. It has a dry shade. Look, whichever way you combine it, whether it's ultra modern, whether it's even in such an ancient place with such beautiful shapes, it's always amazing. Anyway, I'm curious to see what happens, but how much does it cover? Just one coat. And a little help from Ibra and Emma who is coming. Now we will continue with the decoration part and she will show us how she works to start creating the decoration. Today we will make a mirror decoration since we have an arch above us and two small walls on the sides. We will now start here, but the same thing will be realized on the other side. Let's start today's decoration by creating a mirrored image. We will make a decoration inside the frame, but we have to draw the outline first. I have already marked some reference points. Our frame will be rectangular, but it will also have an arch at the top. So I, in a very elementary way, tied a string to a pencil. The pencil is white because having a dark wall, we must necessarily use a white pencil. And I will demonstrate to you how to draw an arch in a very simple way. Then I will carry on with the more linear part of the frame. Now I've marked the center, I've drawn my references, I simply stretch the thread in this way, taking the right measurement and doing this while holding my finger still on either side. In this way, you see, I have drawn a semicircle. I will then draw a small line like this and then go down vertically and finish it with a horizontal line underneath. After drawing the arch, we begin to draw both horizontal and vertical lines. We take measurements from the bottom of the arch. I take the measure here. And here, Then using the spirit level, we trace vertical lines. We will do this work down to the ground where we will conclude with a horizontal line. We have finished drawing the frame and we did the same work on the other wall as well. Now Elisa, let's proceed with the color. We're going to create a textured color because we're going to add a bit of magic star and add some vibrancy to this vintage. I like the word vibrancy, mixing Olivia with just a drop of vintage. Take a look here. In this, can we still have around three centimeters of paint, pure vintage. Now let's go ahead and add some Olivia in it. Then you will put the powder as much as you decide, okay? So I'll show it if I can. There's very little of it, and this will be enough for both frames. I'm starting. Help me, please. I'm going to do it right, huh? Shall I go? You said you'd prefer to have more Olivia than vintage. It's still not well blended. Yes, there's still color in the corners. Lovely. Always remember that when it dries, it darkens slightly, so it will remain a much less bright tone than what we are seeing. Beautiful, very catchy. It almost looks like the color of your eyes. <laughs> so look, now let's add the powder, which, let's tell this at home, will still lighten up a bit because it's white anyway. Shall I go? Let's put in a couple of spoonfuls. You know I like polenta, so shall we abound? Don't worry. You have to make as much as you need, so put as much as you need. After all, it's not every day you make walls like this in your own home, so this is fine. The color is perfect, just the right thickness. So now let's spread this color, which is Olivia, with a drop of vintage inside your frame. Okay, so I use the Margarita brush. It is a very special brush that I think is perfect for this type of application. 
Yes, so I spread most of it here. And then when it comes to be precise, I do that. Look, Isla, you said you didn't want me to go too close to the edge, right? Let's leave the edge visible so we can use it as a reference. So just like that, right? Okay, let's carry on. We do this here and in the other frame. Beautiful, it covers well. is dry and nice and even. Let's proceed with the second step, which is a dry brush that we will do with four different colors. We will use dark sand, Olivia, vintage, and a color that I created by mixing beautiful and vintage to pick up a little bit the color of the bricks of the arches and the floor. We are going to work wet on wet. So with all the shades blending a little bit together, and we are also going to press the colour further with a spatula like this one. Now I'll show you how. It doesn't really matter what colour you start with, and you don't need to have a lot of it. Some leftovers like these ones are perfectly fine. The important thing is that the colour is always pure, and you drain it a little. Then you go to work parallelly a little bit sideways and make some smears. Let's start with a colour. Then, before this one dries, we proceed with the second one. We do not necessarily have to make the same smears everywhere. Also, because to make it more realistic, it is better if they are uneven. Then you choose the appropriate intensity to provide to your wall, whether you want to make it lighter or darker. You see, they don't have to be very evident transitions, also because they slowly blend into each other. I proceed with the last one. Always like that in parallel. At this point, while the paint is still wet, we take a plastic or iron spatula. It doesn't matter, as long as it is wide enough. And we do this. In this particular way, we will carefully press the color in some specific points. And we will also create a unique blending that we were not able to achieve before, using only the brushes. I now proceed with this step over the entire surface. We finished the dry brush step and I will show you a trick to make this wall even more antique. I take a spray bottle and a well-rung damp cloth or even a dry microfiber cloth. The wall, as you can see, is not yet completely dry because we want to create a very harmonious blending. What do we do? We take the spray bottle, go right up close to our wall and let the color drip down. We simply check the dripping a little, but intentionally leave it. Once dry, you will get the perception of this very old, somewhat washed out wall. We do it in many parts. We choose where to stop the drips, simply by placing the cloth. Do 
you see how it looks even when wet? Once dry, you will see it even better. So Elisa, what do you say? I like it because even if you don't have a homogeneous base, but rather have these touches of color, of light, of burnt, it adds a beautiful depth. I don't know if you can see it on camera. I assume you can see it enough. But Liv, it's always nice to see this texture. It's really something to copy. Even if you don't do everything she's going to do now, even if you should, it is already a beautiful base for lovely furniture. Now we finally proceed with the actual decoration. Today we use the pouncing. The pouncing is used for the drawing we will do here in the top center. First, however, we must draw the frame all around. And we do it with this one piece of wood to make it quicker, to not have to take all the measurements. We do that. Let's take a reference. I'm fine with the width of this wooden bar. I simply place it on the edge. This is a much faster method than marking all the measurements and drawing. And so I drew my vertical line. Same thing over here. And I draw my horizontal line. Then obviously in this part where I can't use the stick, I draw freehand. This was my reference line, so I keep the same thickness, always using the white pencil. And do this. Could I also use the same method as before with the string? Maybe by shortening the string? Yes, absolutely yes. Maybe there's someone at home who is particularly precise and really wants to be sure nice and precise. So rather take the string as you did before at the beginning and do it again by shortening the string by four or five centimeters, depending on how much you want the frame to be. The important thing is that the thickness we have vertically and horizontally is the same as on the round part. Okay, I'll finish now. Yes, all around the perimeter of our niche. Then we prepare the colors for the decoration. We prepared the base color by mixing dark sand with a drop of vintage and it will be the base color for both our frame and our decoration. Now I will show you how to draw the lines quickly and easily. We take paint with a flat brush, like this one, or at least of a size that obviously relates to the thickness of your frame. We take the color. We take a wooden stick, which is the same one we used before, and we do this. We place it like this at 45 degrees and simply slide the brush on the wooden stick. Look at how incredibly easy it is to draw a perfectly straight line this way. We really don't need to put the paper tape, it's all faster and simpler. So first we do the edges, then we go to fill in. You see, as I carefully rest the stick, I simply let the brush slide just like this. We do the same in this horizontal part. We take our stick, lean it this way, tilt it, and do this work, and with this brush, we then go and fill our whole frame. I deliberately leave it a bit rough like this because since the wall must have an antique look and the wall already facilitates this anyway, by making the brush stroke a bit more rough I can achieve an antique effect without necessarily having to work on it later with sandpaper. Al is about to proceed with the pouncing. Let's say something. What is pouncing? I tell you and be sure to do it because it is important. Below you will see a link to a video filmed a few months ago with Alessandra, in which we show how to realize a pouncing from start to finish. Even with the strut, you create the line in which you will then put the powder that you will see right now. I mean, this is a beautiful step. Now she will show it to you. But go to the other video where it's beautifully explained, isn't it? Very true. So what are these powders? They are powdered pigments that need to be placed inside a small piece of gauze, forming a small bag that will be our pad, which will be used to stamp this transfer. 
If they do not have powdered pigments at home, how do they make this pad? With coffee, talcum powder, cocoa, spices, everything in powder form. Some chalk, for example, maybe you have some at home. You chop it up with a meat beater. You put it in this gauze, a very fine gauzed cotton cloth, and you create this tampon, which colors a lot. Previously, I drew the decorative pattern on the baking paper. Then, as the technique dictates, I pierced all the contours, and now we are going to gently dab on it. We use this red pigment because it must be visible on our green background. What you can do as you tap on the pouncing without moving the sheet is occasionally try to move away and see whether or not the pressure you have applied is actually enough. Is it fair to say that it's more difficult to do walls because you are working vertically? Most of all, let's say that when the wall is rough, you have to pay a little extra attention. Once you get the hang of it, vertical and horizontal are the same. As a matter of fact, last time we worked on a rough wall, but a little less rough than this one, remember? But you still created a beautiful pouncing on the other wall as well. If you want to do it on the cabinet though, make it easier. Maybe put the piece of furniture horizontally so that you can be even more comfortable. Maybe even on a door, you can run a test on a panel first or on colored cardboard. Don't work on a wall right away, test first. Now that we've finished tapping, we're all set to move forward with the actual decoration process. So, the base color is the same as we have already used for the frame. We simply fill in the spaces. Let's take a round tipped brush, just like this one here. I always use the wooden stick I used before to help myself, but you can also use a long handled brush. It helps me rest my wrist a little so I tire it even less, and I just go and fill all the spaces. Don't worry if you can see a bit of red underneath because it all goes away when you fill in with color. Here too you see I leave a fairly rough brush stroke, a bit like I did for the frame, because this helps me to achieve an antique effect. A useful trick to make this design three-dimensional is to use lights and shadows simply by darkening the base color or lightening it and going over it. In my case, to darken, I simply added a little more vintage to the base, while for the lights I used pure Sofio and I diluted them slightly. What we're going to do now is, with a round-tipped brush a little smaller than the one before, go and start laying down the light and shade. For convenience, I start with the shadows, you can also start with the lights. What I always do is to imagine that I have a light source. In this case, for me, it comes from the top right, and therefore I have all the shadows at the bottom left. I go bit by bit, always helping myself with the wooden stick, and start laying the shadows at the bottom of my frame. You see, in this case, having a small brush actually helps me, because I can define the details well. 
I keep doing this work obviously on all parts, always considering that the light source is the same. I go on to define the petals and all the parts in the shadows. Once this work is finished, I can then start with the lights. We apply the concept of light and shadow, as we applied it to the drawing, to the frame. We provide an angle of 45 degree, and then, as we did here, at the bottom we place the shadow, simply using a flat brush. We are going to do this work in a very fringed way. Let's do all the shadows first, and then do the lights later. I always use my wooden stick to help me. I'll do this. Let's add the lights. Obviously, we are always going to position them at an angle of 45 degree and put them at the top. See how I blend, how I try to keep the color rough? I do all this on the part where my frame gets the light. Now I will finish the shadows on this frame and then I can move on to reproduce the whole design on the other wall. This makeover is finished too, but not necessarily finished at Morella's house. Because she is actually so happy with the way we work, you and I together, that she would like us to continue doing more makeovers. And who knows if they won't be filmed? Why not? If there is something to show, we always show it. So I connect to a topic, open a parenthesis, and then close it. There are few artists like her who are not jealous at all and show you how it works. Go to YouTube and look for artists who show, the same way she does all the steps they do. And write to us if there are any, well, there aren't, so please respect her, especially after seeing a tutorial like that. And if you go to one of her classes, compliment her, because not everyone teaches art for free, right? Not many people do that, but it is good to share. It is good to share and I agree, otherwise we would not be so much on the same page. Certainly, handicrafts works have to be shared, otherwise they would all be lost, so it would be a shame. I hope I have intrigued you with this makeover. Of course, it's not a job that you can do right away. Certainly, if you have some manual skill, if you have already tried to do pictorial stencils, light and shadow, things like that, you can definitely give it a try. As I said before, not immediately on the wall, maybe first on a cardboard or a support that can be easily erased and redone, okay? If you want to learn the art of pouncing really well or you want to learn Alessandra's art, take a course from her. She is highly appreciated by many Italian magic paint retailers who host her for wonderful courses all over Italy. From north to south, you also have this luck, okay? So, thank you, I hope you enjoyed it. Write to me in the comments and I'll see you at the next makeover. See you soon, goodbye.